Okay, so you've made it this far through the videos. Here we are, the last one. Um, how do you build character? And why is it so important that your children are around people with good character? Why is it that when you assess a child's well-being, you look at the people they're around, and uh, specifically at the patterns of action that they engage in, the way they treat others, and whether or not they can initiate and act on their own, by their own volition, or if they, they don't act until someone gives them permission or directs them to, right? That's important because you want people to have heroic character so that they will influence your child in a way that allows them to develop heroic character. And that heroic character is recognized by seeing that a person is their own person. They can do things on their own, even if it goes against their family's uh, way of doing things, right? And, or their friend's way of doing things. They're not, they don't give in to peer pressure and conform to other people's way of being just for the sake of fitting in. And uh, they care about themselves, they care about others, and they care about uh, creating workspaces and a home life uh, that is a conducive to human well-being and flourishing. And it shows. You can tell because they're, they're acting in ways that uh, promote the development of pro-social behavior and that uh, try to get rid of the development of antisocial behavior. So before we go on, pro-social behavior means uh, behavior that is going to promote well-being and flourishing, life and aliveness. It's going to promote humanity. It's going to allow human beings like me and you to reach our full potential together, not dominating one over the other, not submitting one to the other, but equal people, equal power, equal responsibility, equal um, reaping of the reward, right? Reaping of the harvest and enjoying the fruits of our labor. So uh, the first thing we're going to do to help to shape good character is role model or to set an example. We're going to be the change we want to see in the world, as Gandhi said. We're going to act the part, right? So you want your kid to grow up to be a good person? Then you be a good person. You want them to be heroic? You be heroic. And uh, at the same time, don't allow people to hang out with them who are going to role model uh, submissiveness to abusers or compliance uh, with coercive uh, people, you know, people that are going to coerce them into doing things that are not good, right? It, don't let them be around people who role model uh, not caring, you know, or who role model uh, hurting the self or hurting others, right? Because then your kid is going to learn to do that. And so won't your friend and your family and your partner. Because the same principles of teaching kids applies to teaching grown-ups, too, and teenagers. So when you see someone engaging in a pro-social behavior, or maybe not, but you hope they will, and you want to give them this opportunity to learn it, you communicate a rationale for why the pro-social behavior is appropriate. And this isn't going to just be a made-up rationale. A rationale is a reason. It's logical. And it makes sense. It's going to be one that allows the person to get their needs met to achieve their goal while also making room for everyone else to live their own lives, too, unthreatened by this other person, right? Third thing is you're going to communicate rationales for why antisocial behavior is inappropriate. Antisocial behavior is behavior that is against humanity. It is going to strangle life and aliveness. It's going to strangle their ability to be well and flourish in life. And you don't want them to do that. So you're going to tell them, this is not okay, it's not good for you, it's not good for others, that's the reason you're not going to do it. It might seem good now, but it's actually bad now and later. It's really bad later. So, because if you do the same kind of behavior when you're a teenager, someone's going to punch you out, you know, that type of thing, or you're going to lose friends. Uh, Next, you're going to reinforce pro-social behavior with positive attention, praise statements, positive touch, and other rewards, right, and rewarding experiences. So make sure that you attend to that which you want repeated. 
attend to that which you want repeated. If you want them to do it again, then attend to it. Give them attention, right? And it needs to be big attention, big, big mega doses of attention for appropriate behavior. And you're going to take away that attention and ignore that bad behavior because kids love attention, adults love attention. It's like sunlight to us. So you're not going to give it to the behavior that you do not want to see repeated, right? Because if you do, you're going to be um, ingraining that understanding in the child and in the person that if I act out, I get lots of attention. Mommy talks to me for an hour and a half every time I make a bad decision, but she ignores me when I'm good, right? That's going to cre be creating a villainous character person if you reward bad behavior or attend to bad behavior while ignoring good behavior, right? Or punishing good behavior. That's even worse. Finally, you're going to construct social environments and social experiences that are conducive to human well-being and flourishing. And the reason this is so important is because just being exposed to toxic, oppressive, abusive environments is enough to make a person shut down their emotions, uh, their, their awareness of their feelings, and to stop thinking critically. Uh, like if they feel like they can't escape, you know, which kids often feel powerless because they are powerless in that situation. But grown-ups aren't powerless, so don't go acting like you are powerless at work when your boss has abusive antisocial norms going on in the workplace and you just act like you can't do anything about it, right? Because you owe it to yourself and to others to intervene on your own behalf and on the behalf of others to change things for the better. Um, because if you don't, that's the fastest way for you to become an antisocial person yourself, to become a bully or an abuser. Because when you disregard your own value, you are saying that I am worthless. And when you say that I am worthless, that you are worthless, you're going to say that other people are worthless. Because why would other people matter if you don't matter, right? You're more important to yourself than other people. Let's be honest. Deep down, it's a self-preservation thing. You want to be concerned about getting your own needs met. And it's through connection with others that you can get your needs met. So create the kind of places and spaces where everyone can stay tuned in to their feelings, to their emotions, and that they can stay, you know, connected with their awareness and be mindful of what's happening and they can be critically uh, evaluating it. And if you see a problem, if you start feeling bad, don't tune out, don't avoid, don't distract, stay tuned in and tolerate that discomfort and let it be the sign to you that there's something wrong, right? And that you need to change this circumstance so that you can stay aware and mindful and get that poison out and you can start feeling good. And people there can feel uh, purity there, you know, they can, they can get their needs met. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for bearing with me. I know this is a long series of videos, but uh, you're a beautiful audience. Take care and God bless.